Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Saturday, August 5th, and it is flipping hot out here. It is 95 degrees right now. I waited till the sun has got behind the trees here so I can get back here and uh, check out a few hives. Uh, real quick, there's a few winners that have not contacted me via email, so I won't contact you. You need to watch that last uh, winning, winning video where I demoed the... Uh, Hillco bottling tank and uh, see if you won. So yeah, there's four or five people that haven't claimed their prizes. So be sure you check that out and uh, make sure you have won. Uh, the two big prizes have been claimed. Uh, seem like there's a couple of uh, uh, Amazon cards and the the Beast Buster hive entrance things. So but uh, anyway, yeah, check that out. So today I'm going to be getting into three hives over here. Uh, it's been so hot I've been neglecting the bees and uh, Cayman Reynolds commented on my harvest uh, video and said great harvest Jerome now you need to take care of your bees and get them ready for winter and I'm like yes I do need to do that but it is so hot here in central Oklahoma we had uh, two weeks where almost every day was over 100 one day it got to 110 and it was crazy hot but uh, yeah I didn't come down here that day so I'm going to get in these three hives. One day I did walk through here and uh, I smelt a little bit of an odor. And if you've been beekeeping a while, you know that smell when you open it up and you've got uh, like wax moths starting or hive beetles in there. And I've got three hives that there's not much going on in the entrance. So need to check those for dead outs, uh, protect those frames before they get ate up with wax moths. And I've got a hive over there, number 28, that needs... Uh, another deep on it with some drawn out combs so maybe we'll have the opportunity here so with that let's get in there and check it out and see what we can find okay the hives that I noted were 12 17 and 19 so the day I walked down through here there was not hardly anything going on so that's 12 right there And there's a few bees there, but it looks pretty weak. So 17 is over here, which 17 looks fine now. So 17 is this one right here. Yeah, that looks good. And 19 is right here. You can see it looks pretty weak for a double deep hive. And those bees there flying around don't look like they belong there. So I bet you this one here uh, is our problem hive right there that I was smelling. So let's get let's get in that one first. Okay, one thing that's good about you know having more than one hive, you have something to compare to. So when you have you know several hives, say I just had four, and I'm looking at these three here, they all look pretty much the same. Then you get to this one here, and there's no bees out front there's not even any walking around protecting uh, there may be one right there I don't know but we need to get in here and see what we can find so my notes on this uh, it's been a while since I've been in this hive so this hive wasn't strong and it wasn't supered last time I was in it was uh, April 30th and on April 30th, I was doing some things to build it up. So uh, the middle of April, I noted it was it was medium, but it was still queen right, medium strength. And uh, April 30th, I pulled a brood frame up to the top, and I checkered the brood frame or the brood uh, the brood chamber on the bottom to get them to build out some more on the bottom and, and start expanding. But probably what's happened is. That queen wasn't up to all that at the time, so she was probably on her downhill side. And uh, let's see, she was a white queen, and uh, she had a small black butt, so I called her the lizard queen. Uh, that was last year, so I never saw her this year, but it was queen right. So let's let's see what we find. Hopefully, we don't find a bunch of web and funk. Not seeing any bees up here. And I'm seeing kind of funky stuff back here. 
and there's no weight to it. So I just noticed that popping this hive tool in there. And it smells not good. It doesn't smell real bad. No bees up here. So this is obviously, uh, well, we need to get in here. It looks to me like it's an abscond because there's not a single bee in here hardly. I mean, the bees that are in here are just hanging around, hanging out looking for uh, stuff to steal. So we've got wax moth uh, larva kick, kicking in in here. It's not too bad yet, at least not on this spring. See those little trails? See that little trail there? That's where a wax moth larva has crawled around in here eating those cocoons. Uh, so that's why you don't want uh, brood ever to be in your honey super comb. I mean, you can, but I don't like it in there because wax moths are attracted to an old brood uh, type frame. And that's what this was. So if you have a frame that's pure wax and no cocoons in it, they won't mess with it. Uh, they're less apt to almost to not messing with it as compared to a deep frame that's had cocoons in it. So this is what I smelled when I walked through here, uh, obviously. I hope it's what I smelled. I hope it's the only one. So yeah, I'm seeing some more wax moth damage. So there's a kind of cocoons. So those wax moths will eat this up and they'll fill this with web and it's disgusting. Uh, and if you can catch it before that, that is super. So what you can do is you can put these frames in your freezer and kill those wax moths. Leave them in there for a while. And if you cram a bunch of them in the freezer and they're real close together, you gotta leave them in there a long time because those frames won't get cold. And those wax moths will survive. There's a cocoon right there. It's probably a uh, larva in it. Nope, the larva's already come out. It's in there chowing down. Okay, so, yeah, there you can see them in that. Let's get this box off of here. Well, let me look at the rest of the frames. So here's one with a little bit of web in there in between. I'll get around here where you can see it. There, see that web in there? So that's going to be worse. So when you get that out and look at it and determine if this is bad, en bad off enough, those frames, that I wouldn't want to put that into another hive. So bees will clean this up, but if it's too far gone, uh, you don't want to you don't want to put it in another hive, especially if it's weak. Oh my gosh! Enough with the noise. <laughs> Till it's summertime. Yeah. So let's look at this. It's got quite a few little trails there. It's really not that bad. It's just got some web there. I've seen them where they're just packed with web. And yeah, it's no good. I think this is gonna be okay. We can just set this on top of our hive down there that needs cleaned up, or that needs another uh, deep. Number 28, I believe it is. And they will, they will hunt down those wax moth larvae and kick them out. Okay. Good. I, I was afraid I was going to find a huge nasty mess. If I'd left it much longer, it would have been. So let's get this over to Hive uh, 28 and get this box put on it. And then we'll see. Because I thought I was waiting uh, for some drawn comb that I could use for that Hive 28. Now oh, this is one with the crappy handles. Let's look in the bottom real quick. See if there's any damage in there. So why did this hive fail? There's no telling right now. I didn't see, I wasn't looking real close, but you could look in the cells uh, for Varroa mite poo. 
which is little light colored specks. So the bottom looks to be okay. Here's some that I checkered. So this was put in there during the, the uh, nectar flow. So sometimes you'll find these hives like this and there'll be a few bees left in a little clump, but no, not this one. So these have wax moth trails in all of them. There's a moth right there. There's a wax moth. That's what the moths look like. And then the larva looks like a maggot, but uh, they look similar to small high beetle larva, but they'll have dark ends. A small high beetle larva won't have dark coloring on the ends. A little bit of web there. So we need to find a place for this box here or some of these frames and get them out of here. All right, we got a plan now. Let's head over to 28 and we'll get that on there. And possibly, but I doubt it, if they're strong enough, we could, these double nukes, we could lower them down to a single 10 and put another box on top of them, but I don't think they're strong enough yet. But I know this one is. All right, so we've got no bees in here. We don't even have to do a newspaper combine. We can just set it on there. And these, this hive is just a little bit on the grumpy side. So we might even find a frame that's got some uh, resources on it and pull it up here into, into this box. So it's not just a bunch of frames that they're not used to and that'll help them move up a little faster yeah see this is a pretty strong hive just going to leave these bees on there not going to rile them up someone made a comment about uh, feeding this hive it, it's got quite a bit in it weight wise it's not bad and for our fall nectar flow, uh, the plan is they will put a bunch of that goldenrod nectar up in this top box that's already drawn out. They'll clean it up, get it ready. Our queen's laying on this frame right here. That's odd. She's laying on an outside frame. That tells me she, uh, she doesn't have room to lay. No, she's not laying in here. There's just some wax, residual wax particles down. Not particles, but when I coated this with wax, I got did it pretty heavy, and I'm seeing some like white color down in the bottom of those cells. It looks kind of like uh, jelly that they're feeding the brood, but that's, it's wax. All right, let's get on in here. Just don't mess around. We don't need to look at every frame. We just need to get us a good resource frame. I could pull a brood frame up, but, uh, well, it's warm enough. I could, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, it's 95. It's plenty warm. So this is honey. Depending on how much brood is in here. If there's only like one frame of brood, I don't want to pull that up. But if there's multiple frames, then we could pull one up. Here we go. So we got a frame that's got a little bit of brood. It's got honey over here. And this side's completely laid up. And there's a brood frame right there. So that will work. Let me show you what I'm looking at. A little bit of brood there. And this side's fairly well laid up. And the inside of this frame here looks just like that. So I'm going to get a frame out of here. Let me uh, set this down so I'm not one hand in that thing. Find us a decent uh, frame that's drawn. I yeah, should set this down.
So here's a good drawn frame. It's one year old. It says 21 on it, so it's 2021. It's got a few moth tracks in it. And they will clean that out of there. I flipped it around because I want the 21 down here at the bottom. <laughs> I'm kind of OCD about that. Having all my dates at the bottom. See, that one's backwards. Drives me crazy. Okay. So we want to be careful with our frames here, putting them together because our queen might be in a pinch point here. So smoke them down away from that when you close them up. And I'm going to put this this frame here, I'm going to put it up here in this Get our date straight. I'm gonna leave it sitting up like that for now. Get this other frame back in. So normally I would pull up like a, a pollen frame, but these are all capped, so they really don't need it. And there's resources on this frame already. There's probably pollen already on it. Okay. Now we're ready to combine them up. This hive body doesn't feel like it's square. Yeah, they'll prop us that shut before winter. And it won't rock at all. When you see something that's a good deal, like cheap hive bodies at the bee club meeting. You know, check them out, lay it on something flat, wiggle it around, make sure it's square. Make sure it has good, nice handles. I mean, the price was right. You get what you pay for though. <laughs> I'm sticking with Hilco <clears throat> boxes from now on. I did buy one from a company called Texas Bee Supply though. Uh, because I needed some little labels that they had. So I bought one box to uh, check out the how it, how it fit and to get my shipping free. And I'll be doing an unboxing on that and we'll put it together and check it out. Oh my gosh! My queen is up here! That was, I guess she was on the lid when I flipped it around. Man, that is not good. <laughs> She's right here. Get down in the hive, Mrs. There she went, I think. Wow. I looked at this, but I didn't, obviously I didn't see her. Maybe she, oh, I bet she was on that other frame I took out and set down there. Because I didn't check it, I didn't look on it for a queen because it was the outside uh, frame. That's pretty rare, it happens, but you saw it right there. So because there's so many bees on the top, I got to wiggle this around and kind of Slowly lift it up and down until I feel solid wood and you can set it down. No crunch. All right. So this hive I'd classify it as medium strong. It'll work on cleaning all this up. Fall flow's coming. They will put that golden rod nectar up in here. And we need to come back and check it, make sure they're doing okay. Uh, but I think they'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead in this video here and uh, I'm going to make a separate one. I'm going to go check out 12. I think 17 is okay. Uh, I looked at the notes. I don't know why I had 17 uh, written down. I think that day I walked through there, there wasn't hardly any bees out on the front. So, but there is now, so it looks okay to me. So uh, 
I'm going to end this video here. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And thanks to all the subscribers that got me over 10,000. I really appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.